or test tube babies. And not only is IVF a part of my professional life, it's also part of my personal story. And my wife and I went through IVF in 2018 and ended up with these three beautiful embryos here shown on the screen, and the largest of which became my three-year-old daughter. The other two were then transferred into this liquid nitrogen tank shown here, the R2-D2 impersonator, and they were kept there in long-term storage. And liquid nitrogen tanks provide the optimal environment for storing biological materials for extended periods of time, and that's due to their ability to maintain ultra-low temperatures. This last image here is my soon-to-be second daughter who escaped from the liquid nitrogen tank <laughs> and will be joining us all in the beginning of 2023. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but unfortunately, I know through my experience working in this industry that not everybody gets to have this happy outcome. And the downside to storing biological materials in these liquid nitrogen tanks is that they can fail. And when they do fail, individuals that may have frozen prior to chemotherapy, military deployment, or a multitude of other reasons may lose their chance of ever creating a family. The current monitoring systems on the market today are not sufficient in preventing these failures from occurring. And not only are these disastrous or devastating for the patients involved, but they're also ruinous for the fertility clinics that are responsible for guarding these precious samples. Previous settlements have resulted in uh, financial lawsuits that have ended in hundreds of millions of dollars. At Boreas, we have, um, Boreas was born out of a need for a solution that will prevent these types of failures from ever occurring. And we are doing this by providing the safest, most reliable tank monitoring system ever made. We have developed a patented weight-based remote monitoring system that can provide early warning by, taking, by measuring the weight of the tank over time and alerting the user if the weight is decreasing at an unacceptable rate. Today, laboratory technicians manually check and record the levels of liquid nitrogen in the tanks by dipping a yardstick in the tank. With our user interface, we can el el eliminate the time manually spent monitoring and recording these tanks by providing real-time historic or current and historic status of these tanks. If there are any issues or failures, our system will alert out to the user via SMS, email, or automated phone call. We also provide customizable reports for regulatory purposes and an audit trail to track who and when changes were made to the site. The majority of our competitors rely on temperature sensors for monitoring cryotanks. And interestingly enough, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, one of the leading professional organizations in the IVF industry, uh, released a guideline stating that temperature alone is not an adequate method for monitoring liquid nitrogen tanks. There's only one other company with a weight-based system, and they are based out of Europe, and we spoke with their sales reps, and they're not bringing this product overseas. So why is temperature not an adequate method for monitoring liquid nitrogen, nitrogen tanks? Excuse me. This is because liquid nitrogen and vapor phase liquid nitrogen are the same temperature. So you could have a tank that is at 10% capacity, but it would be registering the same temperature as a tank that's at 90% capacity. By the time a temperature change is detected, an end user will have less than an hour to take corrective action. With the weight-based system, we can detect these failures, failures at least 18 hours in advance, providing plenty of time to take corrective action and prevent samples from thawing. Recent regulations from the College of American Pathologists, one of the regulatory bodies in the IVF industry and other laboratory industries as well, came out with some requirements and minimal standards for cryo storage that state, there must be written procedure for monitoring LN2 levels and records of visual inspection and measurement of LN2 levels at defined frequency, or records of continuous monitoring of LN2 levels or weight. You may notice there's nothing on here that talks about monitoring these tanks with temperature. When we bring our system to market, we will be able to provide laboratories with the only all-in-one solution that meets this criteria. The majority of our target audience also recognizes that monitoring liquid nitrogen tanks with temperature sensors is not the solution, and they are willing to adopt new technology once available. 
With the founders having a background in IVF, it's only natural for us to tap into this market first as a low-hanging fruit. However, through market research, we discovered that the IVF industry is only 8% of the less than 100 liter cryotank market globally. And we spoke with a former vice president of R&D at Chart Industries, one of the leading manufacturers of cryotanks, and he says there are 500 of these tanks in circulation globally today. We are a technology company that is offering a business-to-business -business software as a service for organizations that need to monitor liquid nitrogen that store critical assets. We're going to offer a recurring monthly fee with a tiered pricing model for our customers. So how can our target customers pay for our system? Well, these tanks are also a source of revenue for their fertility clinics, and they charge patients a monthly fee that can generate each individual tank up to $90,000 in revenue. And each, we found that each clinic has about 20 of these tanks on site. However, instead of storing samples on site, some of these fertility clinics are now shipping out to biorepositories for long-term storage <coughs> out of fear of being liable for cryotank failure. But for a small price, about 1% of revenue from these storage systems, they could retain this revenue stream and remove the risk of storing on site by adopting our system. Through our connections, we have brought on board several key players in the IVF industry and beyond. And it is, we will use them to gain customer validation and feedback. We also plan on converting these early adopters into our first paying customers and leverage their, um, their reputations for references and sales collateral. We are also gonna use these beta sites as a test bed for our customer acquisition strategy of utilizing a pilot program to recruit and convert customers. This all started in 2018 from a dissatisfaction that the founders felt with the monitoring systems that are currently on the market today. And an aha moment when we realized that weight would be the solution. We slowly began taking steps towards transforming this idea into a product. In April of this year, I was able to step away from my day job and focus entirely on the success of Boreas. And since then, we have completed our beta units, begun customer validation, and over the, six, the next six months, we plan on going after funding, commercializing our product with a goal of going to market in Q, the end of Q1, beginning of Q2, 2023. Berets exists through the efforts and ideas of our team of experienced lab directors, entrepreneurs, DevOps experts, and financial strategists. And we are bringing a vision to market that truly has the power to change lives for the better. Our founding members had a dream of bringing IVF to Wilmington, North Carolina. And in 2014, we did just that. In April, we sold the laboratory to a large private equity-backed fertility group. And this has allowed us to dedicate our time and our resources to our new dream of preventing cryotank failures. Thank you for your time today, and I look forward to discussing this with anybody that's interested.